mobile teams who practically engage with consumer, um, they see a double rates compared to industry average, right? At least mm -hmm. double. And 90-day retention rates, they could increase as much as 48%. User acquisition is great, it's wonderful. Who doesn't like acquiring new users for their apps? But there's a problem. Most apps retention rates are the bad news and it's really bad news. We're talking a leaky bucket. It doesn't matter how much you pour in on the top if it's leaking out even faster on the bottom. But what if you could double retention? How would that change your UA strategy? How would that change your growth story? Today, we're chatting with Storley VP Daniela Denunzio. Storley works with McDonald's, Domino, SoulCycle. You might have heard of them. They have a little bit of a brand. They might even be global and many more brands to drive deep user engagement. Welcome, Daniela. Thank you. Nice to meet you all and super excited to talk about retention today. Hey, that's excellent. It's a good topic. Super excited to talk about it as well. Let's start with the bad news. How bad are retention rates right now? Retention rate are at the lowest <laughs> ever. Um, and there is like multiple problems, right? One good news is uh, according to Data AI, people are spending on average almost five hours on mobile phones every day. That's a lot of time and higher in some markets. But many statistics are showing that even if we install around 80 apps, um, we just use maybe 20 or less per month. Mm -hmm. And actually many users, they just use one app and they use one app on a daily basis. And this first spot is already taken. Sorry guys, Facebook, YouTube, <laughs> Snapchat. Uh, it's really hard to compete with uh, those giants. On top of that, the attention span and head space is so scarce today. I mean, people have like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. The attention economy, that's what we uh, here every day as working with apps, right? And in general. Um, so the problem is that a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. That's what mm -hmm. Herbert Simon says to us. And that's so true for apps as well. So every single apps are battling to kind of gain this share of attention. And um, retention is definitely a huge challenge for app teams today. Um, there are, again, millions of apps out there. Uh, I think I read 3 million apps on Google Store. That's crazy, crazy number. Um, and again, we're battling for 80 apps, 20 apps monthly use, so really, really nothing. And on top of that, another problem is that every new app that we download, we abandon it in the 97% of the case after only 30 days. So. That's not my case because I, I don't use the app at all. I don't even uninstall the app sometimes, even if I have more than 80 apps on my phone. Sometimes I really forget about having it, uh, right? That's, that's crazy. Wow, 3% retention on D30, uh, not pretty, not a pretty picture at all. In fact, if you're like me and you've set Apple to like, you know, kind of take out the trash occasionally <laughs> on my iPhone, that app will just disappear off my phone. I mean, I can get my data back if there's anything there, but that app will kind of just disappear and it, I'll have to re-download that in the background perhaps if I ever decide to try and use it again. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And on what's funny enough, for, funny for not, not that so, but on the day of installation, the average retention rate is only 25%. So most mm -hmm. of the people installed, they never use it. They just install the app and then they forget. And after 30 days, according to Statista, we have 5% retention rate. So that is very crazy low, uh, low number. And um, in my opinion, it's most of these users are not motivated enough. They are in, mm -hmm. initially, there is a spark of, a, of motivation, I download it, and then something happens, um, right? And everything comes down to what value the app offers and uh, how much the app is keeping their promise uh, in terms of what they are promising in terms of value, right? Um, and I can never uh, share some example where we see a crazy number on vertical, right? So mm -hmm. shopping mm -hmm. and marketplace apps, for example, day one, 33, 34% retention, Day 30, 8.7. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Gaming apps mm -hmm. are absolutely the worst. Uh, retention rate day one is 30% or low. And after 30 days, it's 2.5%. Gamers really get bored quickly.
And then we I have think food. that's part of it. I think it's also um, habit, right? I mean, the, 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 the flip side of the bad news is the good mm-hmm. news, right? So the new apps that you get, I mean, so few of them become part of your daily habit. But mm-hmm. the apps that are part of your daily habit, and yeah, sure, there's the Facebook and there's the YouTube. But there's this one game that I've been playing for it's got to be over a year and a half now, right? So they've got massive retention on me. And guess what? I never paid in that game. I never bought anything in that game until like about three months ago. You know, so some poor user acquisition manager was like weeping over his beer one night or something like that. You know, I have this user for so long, doesn't monetize, waste of time. And then all of a sudden, hello, hallelujah, yes. magic happens. <laughs> Yeah, definitely there is like the, the, the good news, right? So mobile teams will proactively engage with consumer. Um, they see a double um, rates compared to industry average, right? At least mm-hmm. double. And 90-day retention rates, they could increase as much as 48%. Um, so the goal, ultimate goal for marketers and product marketing teams is to understand how to get the user coming back. I would say at least once a week um, in order to stick around. And yeah. uh, 90% of users, they, they come back once a week, they will. They will stick around, they will use your app. And that, of course, is very vertical specific, right? Like your banking app, maybe you need to be in there once a week, a couple times a week or something like that. Right. Uh, your calendar app, maybe a couple times a day or more, depending. Your favorite game, you're probably in there. If it's if it's casual, you're probably in there 10 times or five times. Uh, but there's probably some apps like your mapping app. If you're not going anywhere special, you're not looking at that for a period of two weeks. And then for three days, you're looking at it 10 times a day, right? So so it's really, really vertical dependent. Talk to me about the chicken and egg problem, right? You've always got the UA and the product side. You've got, hey, UA didn't bring, user acquisition didn't bring in the right users, or I brought in the users, product didn't treat them right or do the right thing. How do you figure that out? How do you mediate that? How do you turn that energy into something positive? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And unfortunately, we see a lot of times uh, UA and lifecycle teams are somehow disjointed, right? They don't talk to each other. Uh, they almost hate each other. Um, and uh, this, is, <laughs> this is especially true for bigger apps, uh, right? They have completely different KPIs, completely different priorities, and they don't know what the other are doing. Um, and this is the biggest mistake, in my opinion. You, we need to create a feedback system that um, kind of gets end-to-end. Um, right, so UA team need to know who to target and who are the most valuable users. Um, and in order to do that, it starts with engagement and retention. Um, those rates are primary in uh, rates for my UA um, um, acquisition strategy, right? I cannot target the right people if I don't know those users, who they are, uh, how they engage with my app after the, the acquisition. Yeah. So let's say e-commerce apps. Who are the most valuable users? Uh, they are the users that pay full, t- full price, definitely, uh, right? Those are most precious users, and I want to understand who they are, where they come from, um, how much we know about them. And all this data, they need to be shared with UA team. And then UA team can target look alike, same group, similar demographics. That's it. I mean, that's the real. Uh, the real uh, sync that we need to have between UA team and lifecycle team. And then unfortunately, uh, we don't see that happening often. And it's really actually quite interesting, right? Because uh, often you'll find that you'll build an app, you'll release an app, and you have a demographic in mind, you have a user in mind, Mm -hmm. and that's not who actually your user is. That's not actually who your customer is. And you've got to really understand that deeply, right? That's that's so correct, um, and it's incredible how you know it's similar with um, with stories, uh, right? Story stories. We thought at the beginning that our customer was 100% hands down all e-commerce. They get stories, uh, you know, they, they 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 get us, and actually we saw that it's not true. Um, obviously, e-commerce is a portion of it, but we have fintech. They're using like a lot of stories or any many other verticals that you know, stories are interested uh, for them. And we didn't calculate at the beginning. And uh, 
that's the same for any app. Maybe we have a buyer persona, we have a user, we have a perfect uh, thing in our mind, and that doesn't happen. That's absolutely true, 100%. Let's assume that magic happens, um, and yeah. you discover who, you, you discover product market fit, in a sense. You discover who's using your app, who your best customers are, who maybe your worst customers are, those sorts of things. You get that. And let's assume that you communicate that to user acquisition and you guys are working hand in hand, nicely synced up. They get the right people. Now what? They come in the app, they come in the front door. What are some of the wrong things that apps do with brand new users? Hands down, offer poor onboarding experience. Um, <laughs> that's the number one mistake. Um, I think in, uh, we need to think an app as like in life. Right. The first impression matters the most. Um, and if you think there are crazy statistics about first impressions that can blow your mind, it takes around 100 milliseconds to create the first impression about a stranger. 100 milliseconds. And if you think about, um, we have research from Harvard and NYU that found the first impressions are combinations of past experiences, memories, and intrinsic value. Um, right, and this we reconnect somehow with the right demographics in terms of UI effort, right? If the UI effort um, is correct and there's a feedback system, we are bringing to our app same user with same sort of value. So we expect them to be the right user and we can offer them a better first uh, impression. The onboarding uh, process is very, very delicate, right? Um, you should clearly demonstrate how as a user, I can find value in your app. And one of the biggest mistakes we see is we design the process with it like a product walkthrough. So this is each button what they do, this is the app what it does. We just do what in sales we call, you know, feature dumping. We just dump everything and try to go. <laughs> <laughs> they will see they will see some value somehow. Because everybody <laughs> loves school so much. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and instead you know, we need to offer value. And maybe it's not the whole entire app at the beginning that caught my attention, right? It's just one specific specific feature. So onboarding based on cohorts, it's crucial. And this, once again, I need to understand where my user come from and the user come from a specific demographics or specific groups or whatever, they were interested in specific features maybe. So what we promised and in terms of acquisition, we need to deliver when we onboard especially. Um, one extreme case is super apps, right? We have a bunch of the super apps globally, especially in Latin America and Asia. We work with some of them. And what we find out is onboarding is clearly complicated for them because they offer mm -hmm. so many things. You can shop, you can book an Uber, whatever, right? Um, so if someone comes to my super app because they're interested in second, interested in second hand shopping, uh, the onboarding process should cover that part. That's it. I'm interested in that, offer me that value. Um, if then I have also food delivery or other things, I can present the future step by step, like in a second second time, third time, or whatever it is, the right time for it. When we bombard the user with different messages, the results is just confusion. And then at the end, I will abandon the app. It, it doesn't do what the promise. Um, also another thing that we see that that, that very uh, crazy is like, you know, we are obsessed with opt-ins today, right? Privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, we want mm -hmm. them to, our user to opt-in with everything, every single communication channel, everything, marketing and important communication, whatever it is. But this just creates noise and friction. That's it. Uh, you know, we need to provide the value that for them is the best value. And so we need to collect the data that users are willing to share with us. Um, and we need to start to understand that most of users they won't opt in for everything we propose to them. That makes a ton of sense. Um, it's interesting onboarding experiences. I, I used to, and also first open experiences, right? I, I used to keep track of a particular game. Um, I called it Taps to Fun. Um, how many taps before I was actually playing a game? <laughs> and I messaged the company, <laughs> messaged the publisher on Twitter with just with a number. <laughs> and hope that they would figure it out, right? <laughs> and if it went up, it, this time it was seven or something like that. They must have thought somebody was, I don't know, crazy yeah. or insane or something like that. But that's an important number. I like what you said about the permissions. I mean, those are best asked 
in the course of something that makes sense, right? I want to be able to send you push notifications because your order is coming and I want to let you know when it's at the door or it's five minutes away or something like that. That makes a ton of sense. What are some of the right things that app publishers do in their apps to get people up to speed using their app, having a great first experience? Yeah, again, uh, I think everything starts from the uh, proper onboarding, as I said, providing the right value and then moves into right message, right time, right channel, right? Uh, seems really easy. That is extremely complicated, especially today where users are not really uh, willing to, to share their data uh, easily, right? There is like a lot of mm -hmm. privacy concerns, a lot of things I don't want, I don't want them to follow in, to be, I don't want to be followed, right? Um, so one crucial aspect that, that I see, it's uh, how we ask for data and especially how we leverage what Forrester called zero party data, right? Those mm -hmm. data that my user are really willing, willing to share with me because they want a better value for my uh, for the app they want better value for the experience they want a better experience overall um, those are precious information and there are some apps that really do a great job in asking in a slick way nice and engaging etc i can give you one big example of um, of one of our uh, customer which is soul cycle so soul cycle very famous um uh, spinning um app and 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 i would say life lifestyle itself um right they embedded several stories in a way that really center one goal which is for example they call soul 101 they onboarding uh, stories so i explain how soul cycle works which kind of jargon we use in soul cycle because soul cycle is a kind of like their own unique way of addressing things. Um, so you don't get lost um, inside this, this new group of, of people, this, uh, this new way of new lifestyle. So you don't need even to you know, figure out a lot of things. It's very straightforward, one sim simple group of stories, four or five, to make it mm -hmm. uh, the onboarding a very great experience. Also, they ask questions in terms of like reaction emojis, for example, quick polls. Yes or no question. It's it's very fun, interactive um, way. A little bit of videos, some some clips, and you are collecting feedback and user answering in a fun way. Um, right? Mm -hmm. You are not creepy. Um, you are not forcing any answer. And so with that data, then we can leverage um, all this information to create a better experience. And that's just the key, right? For any app leveraging those data to provide the best experience possible. Um, and, you know, also content wise, uh, right? Uh, so a lot of apps are doing an amazing job offering educational co content, especially by analyzing what, where the customer is tapping, right? Where are they focus? If I'm a banking app and I see um, a lot of interest for around one user, like especially in crypto, Providing educational components and, 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 and blogs and stories around crypto, that is providing real, the real value for them, um, uh, right? And another thing that some users, uh, some, some apps are doing very well is timely re-engagement. So again, it's when to, is the right time to do that and how I can create the right time uh, for that. Um, because they are like apps, they kind of have the ability to create FOMO, but also bend the right time, um, right? We come down, for example, or like push notification really timely on a time of the day. So everything again comes down to understanding my, uh, my user deeply. Absolutely. And especially with those early experiences, right? And whether you do it with a deferred deep link or something, maybe a, a, a an app to web to app uh, type of experience. So you understand what type of ad, what, 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 why did somebody click? What was the, what was the call to action and understand that to at first open, then you can kind of tailor that, especially in those super apps, as you're saying to what they want. Talk about personalization here. How can this help? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely uh, personalization is is the key, right? Uh, so, and everything comes down, in my opinion, to right segments, um, uh, right right cohorts. That's when I can personalize at scale 
and I can personalize in a way that delights my user instead of, again, uh, being too generic. Um, user wants to feel special, right? Uh, I want my user to feel special and how I achieve that is with a high degree of, of personalization. Uh, definitely, at the end of the day, personalization means uh, increasing in retention rates, means increasing in app experience um, at, in general, better ratings on my stores, and it's a, a close loop with, uh, with uh, my UA team at the end, right? So everything works um, when we are offering the right experience to the right users. So let's talk about how much you can improve. There were some pretty nasty stats that we shared right off the top, right? 3% D30, 5% D30 retention, this horrific thing, these users that you spent $2, $3 to acquire or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 95 of every $100 in user acquisition is flying out the door a month later. Really, really challenging. I floated off the top. Can you double your retention rate? I don't know. Is that even possible? What, how much can you improve? What percent increase in retention can you drive when you do onboarding, first open experiences, personalization really, really well? Yeah, I, we, we have seen a lot of improvement in daily retention rates uh, and pretty crazy stats actually when the experiences uh, well-crafted, right, from the onboarding day one to day 30 and, and, and over. Um, for example, uh, we work with uh, an audiobook app called Empic Go, and they have seen 26% increase in the daily retention rates. This is outstanding. Um, and it was a combination of, you know, personalization, right channel. They start to implement, obviously, stories, and they have seen their, a higher, way higher engagement than, than ever before. And what we have seen is like they improve their onboarding process, um, as we were talking before, right? Crucial. Um, so right off the bat, my first impression, 100 milliseconds is positive. I like that. I like what they're offering me right from the very first uh, step. Then the first launch, again, it's customized, it's personalized, um, and everything comes down to the in-app communication, right? With push notification emails, SMS, of course, we are, uh, you know, moving those users from somewhere else into into my app, but then how we offer uh, the right experience. Um, so personalization, of course, um, activities for loyal users, uh, and at the end of the day, everything uh, it's connected and provides better retention rates. Um, if we go back again to the onboarding, um, right? That uh, for me, it's like the most important part, right? It's so crucial. Uh, onboarding process can really change the perception of, of any user, like in positive and in negative. Uh, so that again, I have to put, put so much effort in creating the best and it should be personalized. What, I, what we have seen is beside the future dumping that we were um, mentioning before, is kind of like one size fits all kind of boarding. And that's another mistake, um, uh, right? We want to personalize even if uh, we not, are not a super app, even if we offer the same thing, but explain in different way, a bit testing, uh, it's extremely important, as well as when we launch new features. So explaining in the right time, at the right time, the core, the, in the feature, it's crucial. For example, we work with Domino's. Um, Right, that's one clear example how you can place one in-app communication to improve the experience and to improve the future um, uh, uh, utilization, right? Um, they launched the digital wallet during uh, COVID, uh, right? They wanted their user to use more and more this, this digital wallet, so. Um, but they, have, they were seeing not a lot of, um, a lot of users using this digital wallet. Uh, they put in a menu, it was lost in other features. Uh, very, very hard, right? So what they, what they were scared of interrupting the purchase flow, right? You said, you mentioned before, I don't want to get in the way with many taps. Uh, I want a sleek, uh, sleek uh, experience. And, but they used a story right before the checkout. They test it out, right? Let's launch a full screen, quick uh, digital wallet, uh, almost quick ads, fun um, there. And let's see what happens. And they've seen a 20% increase in, in, in adoption of the feature, right? The next day um, with no effect on the purchase. 
Um, right. So if you do the right things, and it, again, without going too much in the way of the user, that's what you get, a lot of improvements. Love it. Now, you said something, it's got to be three, four minutes ago, mm -hmm. about how you treat your loyal users. And that kind of tweaked something in me because what we hear in, let's say, the non-digital world so frequently you know somebody calls up their telco they call up their bank they call up their insurance company because they got something unexpected and then you hear the story on social you see the story on social i was a customer for 10 years and then they hit me with this unexpected charge or i was a customer for 15 years and now they whatever right something big change treating having good retention isn't just about treating people who are brand new, right? It's also about treating people, maybe they're day 50, maybe they're day 500, whatever they are. But you know what? Rewarding loyalty over the long term just keeps those cohorts going and going and going, correct? Absolutely, 100% correct. And, and I have a fun story about, um, in my family, uh, we were talking about the best internet provider. I'm not mentioning the, the company. I'm, I'm in Arizona. There are a couple of companies. And <laughs> one of uh, my brother-in-law said, the best way as a loyal customer to get an action is to post on Twitter and tag them. <laughs> 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 and, and I was shocked, right? So you are forcing your loyal user to use a social media tag you in order to get an action. That's the impression that a loyal user... 15 years with the same company, by the way. So, and it, it just changed it. Um, uh, that's crazy, uh, right? Um, yeah. So mobile team, um, they need to focus on not only the uh, top user, uh, you know, mid user and acquisition all that, but they need to focus on the loyal user. They need to have a special um, set of actions and experiences for those users because you can lose user even at day mm -hmm. 5,000. Uh, you know, it mm -hmm. just, it just, we're humans, we will change, uh, you know, things evolve. Um, and how you do that, in my opinion, you need to be authentic, inspiring, and you need to provide relevant content every single time and every single day. You need to try to do that. So you need a lot of cre creativity as well to uh, kind of push um, also your uh, loyal user to keep coming back, um, mm -hmm. right? For example, I, I see a lot of apps offering special VIP access to my loyal user. That's a nice way, right, to kind of all provide additional value. Why have to stick around, uh, right? Because I have one day earlier access to uh, a, a special item or item that only my loyal customer can buy, a color, specific color. Um, Nike, for example, they, they do very nice job in that, right, promoting. And that works on items. both groups, right? That works on the loyal users because, hey, I'm being rewarded for being loyal. It works on the people who are just peripheral customers or peripheral users because actually I want to be in that group. So what do I got to do to get in that group? Correct. Exactly. So it, 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 it kind of like pushes non-loyal user to, to become more loyal because they want to have exactly the special access. Another thing that uh, it's kind of missing, and uh, I think it's worth mentioning, is here it's creating an omnichannel experience, um, right? So my loyal user can be not loyal in the app, but can be loyal in mm -hmm. store. And mm -hmm. how I can close the loop, uh, right? That's really, really, um, really, really important, um, right? So how I marry the physical and digital words together in order to provide uh, to my loyal user a special, uh, special experience. Um, yeah, at, at the end, uh, again, the attention has to be not only new user, which is, I would say the easiest, uh, for teams, right? Let's put uh, money on user acquisition, grab this user. Um, and then my loyal user will remain there forever. So let's not, <laughs> let's not focus <laughs> on, on that. Right. So, um, that's extremely, um, extremely, uh, it happens a lot, right? Um, happens a lot because again, the incentives kind of, are aligned for that. The incentives are aligned for that. You get credit as a UA manager for getting new users. You get credit maybe as a product person for, you know, improving retention, but nobody gets credit when a user who's been there for half a year sticks around. That's just normal. That's just expected. There's, there's no, nobody, nobody gets a birthday cake for, <laughs> for a celebration party. Wow. That user stayed, you know, but that's actually. 
accomplishment. That's actually an accomplishment. That's a good thing. That's a result of product. That's a result of marketing. That's a result of, you know, life cycle marketing, all that stuff. I, 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 yeah, I agree. And, um, and for example, one thing that I have seen uh, really play well into the uh, loyalty, um, uh, it's gamification, right? So try to, uh, make sure that uh, we can gamify the experience, uh, and delight, um, uh, the loyal user in a kind of different way. One thing that, that I, you know, love is the end of year story. Um, right. So people are almost, for example, in, um, uh, with Spotify, right. I'm waiting for the moment to see uh my end of year story um and see you know <laughs> what uh, what was my uh, you know playlist and how many times i i listened to x uh, uh you know uh, music and whatever it is right uh, that that things it kind of like creates expectation like wow i want to see that right and that was a fun way to uh, to like improve loyalty in my opinion and and Everybody's talking about your end of year story. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a mm -hmm. lot of uh, use cases now, uh, and a lot of, a lot of apps, they're asking us to build stories around the end of year stats, um, right? Which is a nice way to kind of show to user how loyal they were and their stats, uh, right? Can be a fitness. And, fitness app and how important the app was to them throughout the entire year, how important the service was, how important the experience was, how important the brand was throughout the entire year. My end of year uh, app that, that I look forward to is Swarm, which is former Foursquare, which is all the places I've been and checked in. It's been yeah. incredibly boring the past few years, but it's going to get more exciting <laughs> at some point. <laughs> <laughs> we have to bring this to a close, Daniela. This has been fun. This has been Ooh. exciting. This has been interesting and informative. At least in my opinion, people can, you know, flame us on Twitter if, if we're totally mistaken on that. But let's end here <laughs> briefly. Um, what's the cost of not doing this well? What's the cost of sucking at retention? Yeah, um, the cost is uh, death, basically. Uh, you will die. Your app will die. Um, it's, it's that's expensive. Well, yeah, it's very expensive. Uh, you will lose your job. Uh, I mean, you will lose your app. There is no way, uh, that you can stay in business if you don't retain your user. Um, if you don't, if you just focus on acquisition, there is like crazy stats, right? If I increase customer retention rates by only 5%, I can increase my profits between 25 and 95%. That's 5% increase for 25 to 95. That's crazy. Instead, if I just focus on acquisition, it will cost me about six times more to attract a new customer than it does to keep my old one. Math here mm -hmm. is really simple. You need to focus on retention and you need to provide the best experience to keep those users as long as possible. Excellent. Thank you so much. We've been spending half an hour with Storly awesome. VP, Daniela Denunzio. It has been wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.